Hi, and in today's Microsoft Word tutorial, I'm going to teach you how to use borders in Word. So let's just get rid of these borders I've used here. So here I have just a very simple document. It could be a certificate or it could be a notice or it could be a poster, anything you like. So the way in which we insert and use borders is going up to the design tab here and along this ribbon over to this icon here that says page borders. Click on that and you'll have this dialog box which appears. So over on the left hand side here you have a number of options. You have no borders, you can have a box border which is just a plain box. Let's just click OK and see what that looks like. There we are. Let's just go back, back up to page borders. You can have a shadow box or a 3D box or a custom box. So whilst these are all fairly self-explanatory, let's just go to the box one here and just look at these options to the right. So if you're just going to put a box border around your page, we have the different styles here that you can select from. And if you just grab this slider and move down, you can see all the different lines that you can choose from for your box border. So let's just say we chose something like this and then just click OK. And there you have that border. Back up to page borders. As well as selecting the style, you can also go down to color and you can click on this drop down and you can select from any color here or furthermore you can go down to more colors and then you can look at your color wheel you can move this cursor anywhere you like on the color wheel and you can also move this slider to the left or the right your chosen color will appear in this box here and then just select OK so let's just select a random color let's just say red and you can see your preview boxes have all turned red with your chosen color. Furthermore, you can also select the weight or the width of your border. So we've selected the dotted line, but if we click on the drop down, you can select from a heavier weighted line if you want. Let's go down to three points. And again, you can see in the preview how that will look. And then just click OK. And there you have your thicker border. Let's go back up to page borders and then right down at the bottom here you can select your more creative options. So on the drop down you can see we can scroll all the way down and at the very bottom, let's just move this box up, at the very bottom, you can't quite see but there's an arrow which allows you to scroll down and look at all the different options available. Now when you've got the coloured options, these colours are set. So let's say, for example, we chose some globes. So let's select this one. And then, as you can see, the color option is grayed out. So you can't change the color of this option, but you can change the size. So at the moment, you can see the globes over here on the preview. If I make them smaller by clicking on this drop down, you can see that the globes change size and become smaller. So if I click OK, you can see I've got slightly smaller globes for this particular border. Back up to page borders. Now if you go back down to the art section here, scroll down, you'll see some black and white options. Now for these options, they're a little more versatile. Let's just select a pattern. And you can see the color option is no longer grayed out. So once again, we can click and we can select from any color. So let's just select a red again and click OK. And as you can see now, you've got that pattern but in the red color. Now, if we go down and select another option, let's select the flowers. Once again, you can also choose the size of these as well. And of course, the color once again, and it'll all be shown in the preview. Now, Lots of you may want your border to match, let's say, a type of color in your text or in an image. Now, one of the unfortunate things is when you click on page border, you see you have this slightly grayed out or blue overlay. So if you did select a color from your image, 
it wouldn't be exactly the same color. And to demonstrate, let's just go up to the color options. If I go to more colors and I click on this eyedropper tool here, it allows me to scroll over my document and identify any color I want by magnifying it. And then using this central square, I can just click on it. So if I click on this yellow, you see it's matched the color here. But if I wanted to match the color of the background of this image, it won't be exact because of this overlay shading you can see here. So the way to get around that, if we come out now, we go to a different color option and there are a number in Word. You can do it with your borders or you can do it with page colors and, and other color options like text and things like that. But one of the color options is up here in page color. If we go to page color and again go down to more colors, you can see that my image is no longer grayed out or shaded. I can now use the eyedropper tool to select, go over to the background and select that color. You can see it's been identified in this box here and then just click OK. Now, although the page border or the page background has changed, you can simply go back up to page color and select no color. Now, when we go to page borders and now when we go to color, you can see that in recent colors, my color has appeared here. This is this one's here is because I've rehearsed this. And these are also some of the other colors I selected off the dog paint earlier. So these will crop up in your recent colors. So all you need to do now is just click on the option that you want, which we've done here. Then I can go down to the artwork I've selected. Let's say we want the flowers. And you can see how it appears here in the preview. Now I'm going to select it for the whole document. But the other option is that if you don't want borders all the way around your page, let's say you wanted to take out the right hand border, you can use this icon here to do so. What it will do is it will send the border all the way across your page and not just to where it would link up with the next border here. So if I just click OK now, you can see how it goes all the way to the edge of your page and not just to here where it would link up with the vertical border there. And that's how that would look. But if you don't want that, go back to page borders and again, Let's just select the flowers and let's just select the color as well and then just click OK. Now you have your page borders and then I'm going to show you a little bit more of an advanced technique if you want to improve or extend the borders in some way and have a few more options. So I'm going to go up to insert, shape and then I'm going to go to the rectangle, the square here. Click on it and then I'm just going to simply click and drag. Now I'm going to try to make this shape a little bit larger than my borders. Now I can do this with my cursor, but if it gets a little bit clunky and doesn't quite fit, let's say that bottom bit's just a little bit too wide compared to the top, I can select it, make sure you're on shape format, and then I can go over here to the height and width section. And because I want to slightly reduce the height of it, I can go over and use the arrow keys and then I can select the down arrow to reduce it. And with one click, you can see how I've now made that equal to the top. So you can go over here to adjust the width and the height if you find you can't quite get the, the size that you want. Now, once you've done that, keep it selected. And obviously you can see all my words and everything are hidden. So what we need to do is make sure it's selected go to shape format and go over to this section here and go to send backwards. Now I can click once and you see the picture. I select it again and click. You can now see the title, click again and the words will appear. So what that's doing is gradually sending this blue shape backwards and putting all the other information forwards. Now if I only want to use this as a border, then I can double click on the shape or again go up to shape format and along to this format pane icon here. This will bring up this menu here, the format shape menu. And if I go down to fill, then I've got a number of different options. I can fill with the current color, as you can see it's currently blue, but I can also take out that color and just fill it with a transparent fill. If I then go down to line and click on solid line, at the moment you can see the width is only one point. So if I click away from it, you can see it's only a very tiny line. If I want to make that thicker or change the color, 
I select it, I go back up to the width and use the up arrow. So let's say I want this to be five points. You can type it in by the way. And then I just want to have a plain line, which I currently have. I want to change the color, click on the drop down, and again you can go to recent colors, click on that one, and as you can see, you have an additional border. Now, furthermore, you can then fill this with a gradient to then further extend your border. So again, select the shape, go to fill, go to gradient fill, and you can change your gradient using these stops here. So let's start from the top of here. Your presets are here, so you can select just one of these if you wish to do so. But to get the effect that I want, you need to go to rectangular, which is your rectangular gradient. Go down here to direction, and unfortunately you can't see it, but go to the middle one, which looks like there's a lighter shade in the middle. And then you need to choose your colors. So if I choose white for this one, as I pull it over to the right, you can see how my gradient moves out to a rectangle, forming just a light border towards the edge. I can then go to this marker here, go down to the drop down, and select the color of my choice to match the rest of my document. And then again, I can move this to wherever I want. Now once I finish that, you can see it's lovely on the outside here, but the flowers here are quite close to the edge of this border. So to make it a little bit thicker, like it is on the right hand side, if we copy and paste this current shape that we put in, so Command or Control C, Command or Control V, you can see it's copied across. We need to send it backwards, come up to the top here, again send it backwards, and then what we need to do is to reduce the size of it so that it goes inside the flowers. Like this. And once again, if it's a little bit clunky, then I want to extend up here. We can go up and to the right to the height and just increase it one stop. Okay. Now to ensure this is all perfectly aligned, we can go to shape format, make sure it's selected, the shape, go along to align, click on the drop down and select align to center. And then again, the drop down and align to middle. And that will mean that this particular shape is right in the middle of your document. And again, you can do it with the outside one as well. So click on the outside border, go up to align, align to center and align, align to middle. That will mean that all of your borders are now perfectly aligned. And of course you can go in now and you can adjust these gradients if you want to. So for this one, if we didn't want the gradient, we could go across and just switch to no fill. And then you'll just get a thicker line by the side of the flowers. Or you can go back and select gradient fill again. And then you can adjust this accordingly by using these sliders. But again, don't forget you can change all of these colors in your gradient fill if you select it. In your gradient fill, you don't have to have white, you can have a different color here. And you can add markers if you want to, just click on the plus icon here, and you can choose a different color, let's say a darker blue, and you can really play around with all of these colors to get it to exactly what you're looking for. So I hope that's helped you today. If it has, please subscribe and have a great day.